Round three, here it comes. This is where I found a friend, or better said, well, I actually turned to my AI helper that was ChatGPT and literally just sent photos along the way to get the feedback. I wanted to be absolutely sure I wasn't missing anything, well, something obvious anyway. Uh, we went step by step, cleaned both sides once again, prepared the dye and basically the cold clay so they are both just as uniform silver sheen uh, and then just wiped up any movable excess until it barely looked like anything was on there at all. Even pulled the liquid metal back slightly from the foam dam, make sure nothing was pulling at the edges and mount with very careful cross tightening pattern with very tiny quarter turns. We dialed the application until it looked like a mirror film. Thin, even, no beads, no shine that runs if you tilt it. It looked right, it looked factory, it looked like the photos you see in the teardown videos. Well, I'm kidding. It looked like one of those uh, if you squint is mint videos because it's really hard to handle this stuff and, uh, well, to make the perfect application since you need surgeon-like hands uh, and maybe robotic applicators uh, and I've got neither of those. That's what makes liquid metal a headache. You definitely have to have the right environment in order to apply it and very, very small errors or mistakes can cost dearly. So I'm not a huge fan of liquid metal by now and definitely you should learn from this something. At least the takeaway should be that if you want to do it, you have to be really prepared and um, disappointment is always an option. And just like that, I tested again. Results? <laughs> Still hotter than stock under gaming loads, about 5 to 10 degrees Celsius higher, but it seems that the fans now are actually not ramping up as much. Remember spotting something that was wrong from the very first time I've opened up this device? Mm, yeah, well, the behavior changed, uh, the behavior of the fans. And this might be because, well, the contact isn't as good as possible and or maybe it is too, too much liquid metal applied there. Actually, I think part of the problem might be that I haven't redone the VRM and memory thermal interface. Uh, the factory actually used a paste-like gap filler, uh, not pads, that's just a filler. And I'm not going to tackle this in this video. Uh, we can clearly see that the putty there that has been used by the factory should have been redone as well because now it's split between the heatsink and what's left on the VRMs. And this could cause, of course, and actually this will cause, of course, air gaps in the composition once it's all put together. This will hinder, of course, the thermal exchange between the VRM and the cooler and thus the sensors will see the temps on the cooler as being okay while the VRM will definitely run hotter. Or at least this is what I was led to believe. So if you feel that something else is going on, I would definitely appreciate your comments down in the box below.